Happy Friday within the week after Easter, also known as the octave of Easter, as this week we have asked the question that many of the disciples were asking just a few days after Jesus' resurrection, and that question is, of course, what's next? This week, as we have unpacked what's next, we were reminded that what's next is a person, not just a process or a program or anything that we do. We are engaging with a person. And over the last couple of days, we have talked about the favorable environment that the Lord is asking us to be intentional about so that we can be disposed to engage in that relationship with the person who wants to be involved in our life. Yesterday, we talked about the the need for time for God. And today, I want to encourage us about what we are to do with that time. Our personal prayer, uh, wherever you are with prayer, whatever your experience of personal prayer has been, it's our personal prayer that is probably the most important thing for us to hold on to and to anchor ourselves in at this stage of our life. Let me first outline for you what will happen if we don't pray and then encourage us with some encouragements around prayer. If we don't make time for our personal prayer, for our personal conversation with God, one of three things will most likely happen in our life. Number one, the words of a podcast like this will be attractive and they'll get you kind of going and they'll create some momentum in your life. And more than likely, that momentum will last and that consolation will be there for either a number of weeks or a number of months. But at some point, my words can't replace your words. My experience of God can't replace your experience of God. So what will happen is if we're not engaged in our own personal prayer, then a podcast, um, a book on meditations, or anything that is reflecting back to us the experience that someone else will have, eventually that will fall short, and then we'll look for the next podcast, or we'll look for the next book on meditations, or we'll look for the next thing, hoping that can fill the ache or the void within us. I say that because that's been the pattern for so much of my own life, where instead of making time for personal prayer and filling that in with a personal experience of God, I kind of bounce from person to person, from place to place, hoping that what I can get from somewhere else can kind of fill the ache within. The second thing that will happen if we don't make space for prayer is that we will become more susceptible to the ups and downs, the peaks and valleys, the ebb and flow in our feeling God's presence. So we'll feel God's presence for a while, either in a season of Lent or whenever um, the subject matter of a podcast or the subject matter of something that we're reading kind of touches our hearts. But the ebb and flow of consolation and desolation is an expected and normal and necessary part of the spiritual life. We are going to hit dry spots. We are going to have seasons where we don't feel God's presence. That has not as much to do with the way that we operate. That actually has something to do with the way that God operates. It's important for us to take seriously the reality of the ups and downs and the ebbs and flows. And if we're not anchored in personal prayer, then we'll be more susceptible to either sin in the periods of dryness or we'll be susceptible to discouragement in those times of dryness because we haven't carved out for ourselves that space of engaging with God. Third thing that might happen if we don't make space for God in personal prayer is that we will become too inordinately dependent upon external circumstances to generate internal experience. So we'll go to Mass and the music has to be right on and the homily has to be right on and everything has to be absolutely on in order for us to encounter God. Or the external circumstances have to be there. Um, the podcast, the book, the, the website, the blog that we go to, they all have to be on in order for us to actually encounter the presence of God. We become too dependent upon the external stimuli and we lose sight of the fact that that's actually supposed to be something that God is generating in our life. 
Making space for personal prayer is important so that we don't fall victim to those three things. Now, wherever you are in your experience of prayer, that's where you are. God's not going to expect you to be where you're not. But God loves you way too much to leave you there. There are lots of things that I would recommend for you in your personal prayer. We'll talk about the three uh, most recommended forms of prayer tomorrow. But it's important for us to take seriously making that time for personal prayer. And so your homework for today is I just want you to look back on where are you in your personal prayer. Take stock of what are you doing in that personal time? Are you taking personal time? And do you know what to do in that personal time? Tomorrow we'll talk about the three, uh, I think, easiest ways for uh, ordinary folks in the real world to go ahead and pray. But until that unfolds tomorrow, enjoy today. Enjoy Friday. Looking forward to being with you tomorrow. God bless you.